Alright, here we are with an Office 2016 tutorial. And in this recording, we'll be talking about Office 2016. Version 2016, you might have a more modern version, for example, Office 365. But we'll be talking about Office 2016, which is very similar to Office 365. Let's go ahead and start with Microsoft Word 2016. So, as you can see, this is our home screen, and it has two panes. The left side is your recent documents, and at the top, we have pinned documents. And these are the documents that I've pinned, so that they'll always stay at the top of the list, and won't get stuck down at the bottom of the, the other documents list. So, for example, I've pinned this document, this document, and this document, three documents in the pin section, and I can always unpin from this list by clicking on that icon. So if I click that, then it will become unpinned, and it'll just go in another sec section called today. So there it is, and now, in this, the center area, as we like to call it, we have templates, and your account if you're logged in. So right now I have Word running in the blue theme and the circuit background. And you might have it in a different theme, but I think I like the blue theme best. So here you can see the template area and which we'll talk about later, you can create doc you can create personal templates, but we'll talk more about that after we get to the basics. So here are the feature templates, but right now Word does not have any feature templates. So you can see the search here. So you can search for templates, for example, like cards. And if you type, like, for example, cards and then hit enter, then it will, it will be searching and then it will come up with probably a lot of templates here that you can use for uh, cards or any other thing that you would want to search for. Also, there's this suggested searches area that has searches that are categorized for example if you want like education you can click on that and you find like reports or uh presentation notes or field trip forms or assignments or rules stuff like that so now that we've talked about templates let's go ahead and create a new blank document so this is the word user interface and this is document one you can see along the top we have the title bars, the usual Windows buttons, and if you see right here in the corner, I don't know if you can see that, let, let me uh, point to it right here. So that button right in the corner is the, the save button, and that lets you save documents. And yep, so also we have these two grayed out buttons that are undo and redo. So let's type something, and it's they're going to light up. So if we do undo, then it gets rid of that. If we do redo, then it puts that back. So that's what that is. So now let's get to the tab bar. The tab bar, you can see right along the top right here. So the tab bar is a, a very famous Microsoft part of all the Office applications. And let me just adjust this real quick. All right. So Right now we're on the home tab and we have different sections to it as you can see. So the section on the very left is called clipboard and that includes paste, cut, copy, format, painter, and paste as you know you can do control V to paste something. And right now I had an image in my clipboard so you just, whoops, you just undo that. Alright, next we have cut and I haven't cut anything yet. Now I can do a and do that as test, and then let's do cut. And then later, we can select paste, and it pastes it. Cool. All right, next we have format painter. And if we format painter, then you can always just go to the uh, the paint section and do smart art or whatever you want. So that's the format painter. All right, let me just put it on the paste. All right, so. Next, we have the font section, and I just want to tell you that you see this little icon there? That is an extra icon. So if you click on that, you get even more options that cannot be fit in just that little area. And this is more clipboard options and paste all, clear all, and uh, yep. 
So next we have font section, and this is all about the styling of your font. You can pick fonts here, quite a variety of the usual fonts like you would expect. And I have uh, several fonts installed, uh, like Fear Code. Uh, yes, so you can install fonts and it'll come on to the word, and you can choose from it in the font selector. So let's just go with say. Uh, it's a consulus. So, consulus. So, that's what it looks like. So, here is the font size, and we have all the way up to 72 and all the way down to 8 for a variety of font sizes. And you can pick from any one of these, and it will be a different size. Now, you can also type the font size, like 35 specifically, because if they don't have it from the drop down, then you can always just type it in for like if you want 5. This is really small, so yeah, probably no one is going to use that. Usually, I, you know, the default is 11 for Microsoft Windows. Alright, next we have the usual font grow, which makes it larger. I usually like to do, uh, the shortcut for that in Microsoft Word is, con is control, control shift greater than or less than and control shift greater than makes the font bigger and control shift less than makes the font smaller so like for example i'm doing control shifts less than it goes smaller and i'm getting it all the way up so yeah that's how that works next we have case so if you want to be like all like a flyer poster because some flyer posters have all caps then you can select from this menu you can do uppercase you can do uppercase to get like all like this so it's going to no matter if you have it down or not it's going to be uppercase you can go back to sentence case for the regular so next we have the clear all formatting button and if yeah you see it just went back to the regular calibre and the regular 11 and this what this does is it clears everything you formatted all the styles all the reviewing and all of the table contents all of the colors and all of the font styles all of the everything and usually that can be a bad thing if you've got everything set up really nice and you don't want to lose it just be aware of that button so Next, we have bold, italic, and underline, which is the universal word processor controls. And you can see underline has various options, which I really like. Pages or Google Docs doesn't have that. So this is a dashed, a dashed underline. So you can see that's a dashed underline. And you can have a squiggly underline like this. Or you could have dot dash dot dash like this kind of like morse code almost so that's the underlined feature so next we have bold and you all know what that does it makes the text bold of course and next we have italic the italic italicizes it and next we already talked about underline and we have strike through and uh some word process like uh very cheap ones don't have that but microsoft word does and that's very good so here we are, and we have, for example, test, and it puts a strike through it, and there's no options for that, unfortunately, but I don't think we need any. So we also have subscript, and the shortcut for that is control plus equals, is that right? Yes, yeah, that's control plus equals, and this is subscript, so let's put it on regular without subscript. Test, and then if you want to put it in subscript, test, and it makes it smaller. But if you want to do like, like, uh, raise to th like four, let's say 480 squared would be like that. And you could put it in subscript. You could also choose text styling. All these crazy outlines and shadows. And like, for example, we want this test. That's, that's really cool. I don't think any other common word processor has that. So let's put it back to regular. All right. So now we have font coloring oh no this is highlighting all right so this is highlighting and let's put it on yellow see what happens and i'm going to switch it on you have to select a section to do it so we do like this and you can see it highlights in yellow if there's a specific part that you want to highlight or an important part of your document that's going to put it yellow like a highlighter it's going to be like real life so you can choose different colors for your highlighting like say pink 
pink. And then we can activate that and it highlights pink. Yes, I think Google Docs has that, but not pages on Mac. All right, now I'm going to put this back to a normal, no color. And now we have theme colors and the text color. This is very important. And you can also have this gradient color, which I really like. It's super cool. Uh, we can have a variety of theme colors, for example, like this light blue. And then if I do something like this, you can set the automatic to, for example, this, and you can select that. If you're on black, then you can just click that and get to this brown orange color. I don't know really what that is. So, put this back to uh, not 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 white. Now you can't see anything. And yeah, back to black. Black. All right, great. Now we have all of these different paragraph controls, and again we have font styling and yeah. So we talked about how that can give you extra options for legendary design spacing, default, and statistics uh, sets. And in another video, we'll be talking about how those things work and what you can do. But in this video, we'll just talk about the UI. So, as usual, we have our bulleted list, which looks like, like. And then over here, we have a number list, test. And then we have... A series of different lists you can choose like 1.1.1 it can go like that so we also have aligning which is very important and you can align that text to be centered on the right or justified and yeah it says it right there if you have any questions and it could be control J means justify Contr Control R means right. Control E means center. And Control L means left. Now, we have indenting. So we can decrease an indent or increase the indent. And that is five spaces in a myriad. It, it, it puts one tab stop and that's what it does. Also, we have what looks like sort. So we can sort it in alphabetical order, ascending or descending. And this is very useful if you have like so many this time and then you want to put it in alphabetical order. So we also have shading. So let's say we put it on black and you can put that in shading. This is very, very interesting. I really like that. Also, we have bordering, and you can see top border, left border, right border, no border, all borders, outside border. There's so many options for this. You can draw a table anywhere, and yeah, stuff like that. Very interesting. Now, for the most advanced part of using Microsoft Word, we have all of our styling. So, our styling right up here, we have uh, no spacing, heading one, heading two, and you can just click on it, subtitle, sub, sub no emphasis, all of this, and there's even more. And in the next video, we'll talk about modifying styles like this. And if you're using Office 2016 online, I'm afraid you won't be able to do that very sadly, because Microsoft wants you to pay. And of course, the insert, the insert page does it what you need. So. You can do a cover page, all these different things. You can insert a blank page. You can do a page break, a table. You can draw it, and then you can insert it like that. Very cool. Look, when you draw it, pops up a table tools. I mean, a table tools. And that always happens for like special tools that you can use. So if you click on it, we get design. You can choose the design of the tables, the layout, you can change the height of the cell, the cell spacing, and cell padding. I mean, no, that's HTML. <laughs> View, we have web layout, read mode. You can put it in read mode, and it looks like you're reading a book, which is very important. So, next, now we get out of the read mode. You can always click down here, like way down there uh, where I'm pointing. You can always click that to easily switch between views. And this is web layout and uh, web layout is really hard to see. So, outline, draft, ruler, you can uh, turn off the ruler, but I'd like to have that on. Grid lines, yeah, no. <laughs> if you're doing mathematical equations, then yes. The navigation pane, it activates that. And by the way, the navigation pane just like, it's like a find in your place. So let's do like very, and it has like very. So it's very useful, <laughs> very useful. 
Next, we have zoom. And you can change the zoom. And we push in 107, and you can see it zooms in. And also, you can use the zoom bar way down there. It's very hard to see, but it's down there, and let me turn it up. And you can see it's zooming in all the way in. That's 270 to us. I like to keep it at 100, sometimes even 90. But if it's 90, then this font has to be very big. So, next we have 100%. You can just align it to 100%. You can have one page, multiple pages. Yeah, that looks really cool. I should use that page with. And I don't like that. Now we have new window, which creates another window in Microsoft Word. Which is kind of awkward. I don't really like that. <laughs> so, next we have arrange all. We can split. Yeah, we can split the windows if we want. Let me control Z that. All right, now we have synchronous scrolling switch windows. You can do document one. You can do macros. And yeah, this is all getting in very advanced stuff. And we might talk about this in later videos. So now back to the design tab. And this is basically a replacer for the uh, more advanced version of the styling tab. And you can have colors and fonts. Also, watermarks confidential you can do on all the pages it does confidential and you can do like office you can do fonts like office 20 2007 to 2010 like this is very old style if you want all right next we have the layout and you can change the margins so custom setting i like to have room for the page numbers which is why i do if you have page numbers which is why i do bottom 1.25 but you can do custom margins and choose your things they also come with a variety of built-in margins, so you don't have to do it yourself. Also, here is the paragraph, and don't forget to do this if you want. Now, paragraph, you can change the indenting. I like to do this if we, if I forget to indent each paragraph by spaces. I mean, oops, <laughs> don't want to go minus there. All right, next, we have spacing, before, after. So usually, I like to keep it at zero because if it's eight or even more, then I get bothered by it because it's there's too much space between the lines and it gets really bad. Selection pane, you can have over here, references. Table of contents, which is, sorry to say, not included with the web version, unfortunately. Automatic table, you can do like this. Yep, and you can do from the yes. This is all because it doesn't find it because we don't have any entries, but that is how you would regularly create a table of contents, which we will talk about in other videos. Next, we have adding text and updating tables. And if you if you want to update it, then you could just like go and update it. You don't have to like change every single one manually and change the page numbers, but you can update it if you want to add a new chapter or a new part in between chapters. You can also insert a footnote, which is very useful. Yep, that's also very... Do they spell check down there? Yes, they do. So if you misspell anything down there, words got it covered. All right, so next we have bibliography, citations and bibliography. I don't know if Word Online has that, but that strikes me as a type that it wouldn't. So we have here... You can do managed sources, and you can do uh, like Wikipedia, for example. You can do like wikipedia.english.org, whatever they call it. And we can have style, APA, Chicago, like if you're writing a report or something. You can insert a caption, like table one. This is a test table. And figure one, you can do figure. Yeah, that's very uh, useful. You can, you can see table one. This is a table of con contents, and that's what it is. So, next we have style, caption, insert table of figures, like figure one, blah, blah, blah. And most uh, guides have that, so you might want to find that useful. All right, so next we have cross-reference. Uh, we'll talk more about that in other videos, as well as table of authorities and index. And you can see the only one with an extra is the footnote and endnote. Uh, and I accidentally clicked the Word 2016 help button, and they, that's also a thing you might want to remember. So, mailings, review, and view. We can have tell me what you want to do, which is very useful when you want like to find a feature and, and stuff like that. Like, like print, print preview, and stuff like that. 
and you can connect to a printer, settings, print one sided, collated, and all of this stuff that, uh, very bad stuff. And we might talk about in later videos. So, uh, that is just about all for Microsoft Word. And don't forget about the saving process, because if you don't save, then you use a document. It is very simple. You just browse here. This PC, you can add a place, or you can just go to the File Explorer window without bugging around in the Word interface, which is usually what I like to do. So let me just save it as test.docs. Well, so that's basically, that is basically what Microsoft Word is about. And that is the end of our tutorial. Next time, we will be talking about in detail of Microsoft Word, more features. And that is the end of our video.